Hi, welcome. Today we're going to talk about the MEP spinner. Over here we have a large display board. We actually do have over 4,000 different lures that we do make right here in the plant. We do have a plant in Nice, France, and then this is the only plant in the whole United States. They will cover the countries of Europe. We will cover the whole United States. Today we are actually going to talk about the B3 Aglia Squirrel Tail Gray, the Hot Fire Tiger. So going through the whole plant, we will actually talk about this one. We'll show you a step at a time how it's actually made. Back in the, it was probably the 1950s, maybe early 60s, my dad's favorite spot to go trout fishing was on the Wolf River east of Anigo. And uh, he was out one day and came back to his car and there happened to be another young fisherman that came in about the same time and my dad was proud of his catch so he had to show this kid what he had caught and he showed him his trout. Well then the kid opened up his creel and showed my dad what he had caught and his fish were bigger. So my dad had quite a surprise there and when my dad asked the kid what he caught his fish on the boy showed him a MEP spinner that he had tied some squirrel tail onto the treble hook. So that really was where the idea of putting a tail on the MEP spinner was born. It really changed the history of MEPs at that point because uh, fishermen felt they had to have a plain lure plus a lure with a tail on it. And uh, it was quite an innovation at the time. Okay, back in this area is what we call squirrel tail department. So we're actually going to work with your gray squirrel tail, your fox squirrel tail, and what we call the bucktail, which is your deer tail. So what we do when they come in, we actually take them and we put them in your wash machine and your dryer. So we actually wash the tail and we dry them. Once we get that part done, if we need to, we will actually dye them these different colors here. So your bucktail can get dyed about five, six different colors. Okay, here's actually where we're actually gonna do the tying process. So we'll start out, we're actually gonna use your squirrel tail and your chicken feathers. These are actually your white feathers off the neck of the chicken, we'll dye it that red color. So we actually work with a company and they'll actually come in a big strand like this. The lady right here will actually take a couple at a time and she'll take them off and she'll tie them and place them onto her hook. Once she gets the feathers tied on, then we're actually going to take the squirrel hair, which actually we're using the tips of the tail. So we actually go through and we break off the tip because the hair is longer here. We'll use the longer hair on the bigger size hook. This part we'll use on your smaller size hooks. So right now she's actually tying your squirrel hair onto the hook right now. When you put a tail on a lure, it does a couple things. One is you can add color to a lure and uh, by adding color you can add contrast between the spinner blade itself and the color of the tail. And it also creates kind of an indistinct image traveling through the water like movement. A minnow for example when it swims through the water and its tail is, uh, is swimming back and forth rapidly it's probably not a very distinct image to a predator and I think uh, adding a tail with all of the hair that flares out and uh, compresses together and then it flares out again, that adds that indistinct image that creates a strike response in a fish. New products are extremely important in the fishing industry. We look at it as we would like to come out with something new every year. Of course the original MEP spinner has been out since 1938 and fishing with spinners is not something new to fishing so a lot of times you've got to really struggle and spend a lot of time trying to find new twists and new things you can do with a spinner. It's not always the easiest thing in the world, but the main thing is having something that works and works efficiently enough to catch fish. It's not uncommon to work on a lure for more than a year. Uh, you may not be working on it full time or steady, but it'll encompass more than a year, um, especially with testing in Wisconsin. Uh, 
the water is a little hard at some times of the year, so uh, we, we need to use a, uh, uh, the pool at the Super 8 on occasion to, to continue that process. But um, we'll probably have well over a thousand hours of, of prototypes and testing to any given lure that we have. This is the first step in our painting process. We, first we put etch on and then a white primer. Our white primer is put on so that when we put a fluorescent color on, it makes the fluorescent colors pop. We need to have a good durable base to get started. This is our chartreuse top coat. This color added with green and orange makes for one heck of a good fishing color. It's very popular and it's the start of our fire tiger painting process. This is the third process in painting our hot fire tiger. This is where we airbrush the hot orange as an accent color. The fourth step in our painting process for the Hot Fire Tiger is to paint the hot green accent color. This is done by Melanie, one of our master painters. It's all hand airbrushed and every lure is a little bit different. After our paint process is complete, this is where we start to put our decoration on top of it. It's called pad printing, and when we start, the blade is painted. When it gets done, it's a finished product ready to be assembled. 